Here we go. I'm recording. All right. Happy May, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. We are going to be talking about the F word tonight. That's right. I know that that made um, a lot of people giggle, like when they read it, that we were going to be talking about the F word. But honestly, like, I think that um, it probably kept a lot of people away because they don't like the word follow up. And it's like a four letter word to a lot of people. But it's one of those biggies. It's one of those things that's going to change your biz. Um, but I know that there's a lot of like hurdles to get over it. I think if you talk to um, a lot of people who have been doing this business a long time, follow up is one of those things. It's kind of like their Achilles heel. Like they don't do it. It scares them. It feels overwhelming. Um, they don't like it because it doesn't seem fun. It doesn't seem like a fun thing to do. It makes them feel salesy. Like those are all like the things that you hear when people talk about um, when people talk about follow up. But they only are like that if you're looking at it through that specific lens, right? So I'm just going to give you a couple of different pair of glasses to look at some different lenses tonight. Um, so um, let's talk about me because, I mean, what else is there to talk about? <laughs> so I um, was eating dinner the other night and... Um, and finished up dinner, loaded up the dishwasher, and I reached under the sink to grab one of those little Cascade pods, and um, guess what? No Cascade pods. And I knew I was low on Cascade pods. I knew I, knew I had to get them from the store. I didn't realize I was all the way out, but um, I was thinking, ah, oh, if only someone would have reminded me that I need a Cascade pod, right? If only someone had said, hey, girl, you need stuff to do your dishes. And so I was like, oh, if it was a Scentsy thing, I'd have it, right? Um, fingers crossed, dishwasher. How, how awesome would dishwasher stuff be from Scentsy? Anywho, um, so it's just one of those things, like, if I had had someone following up on me, if I had had an adult looking after me, then I would have had the pods. Right? It's just one of those things that would have been really nice to have showed up at my door, wrapped in a little plastic bag with a little bow like we do our Scentsy, right? And I would have had, um, had me some Scentsy. It's just one of those things, right? That's just one lens to look at follow up. And then the other lens is, um, I talked talk to you guys, I mentioned a little bit about Tastefully Simple. So this happened to me a while ago. Um, it probably would have played out differently now because I kind of understand our business. But um, I had this Tastefully sim Simple stuff. It was called Taste of India. It was so good. And so um, I finished up the bottle and I was um, ready for more and I had the bottle and it had this girl's label on it and it, everything was there for me. I could have, I could have called her and got it, but I didn't know she still sold anymore. I didn't know, like I didn't want to make for an awkward conversation. I didn't want to have to call her. And so I just went online and I ordered from the tastefully simple website. Like I know it's bad now. Like I get it. I get that you should support people. But at the time I just didn't understand that that's how this business worked. I, I, and most people don't. We're, you know, until you're in it, you don't understand. So how awesome, I was gonna buy it anyway. It would have been great if she would have gotten the sales. If she would have called me and said, hey, I'm placing an order, can I get you something? I definitely would have given it to her. I really liked her, we had a great conversation at the event where I, like, I really, there was nothing. Um, I didn't dislike her. I enjoyed talking to her, but I just didn't want to bother her, right? So I'm going to give some, I'm, somebody's going to get the sale. It may as well be her, right? So <clears throat> I figured if she's still selling, she would have reached out to me, right? So both of these um, scenarios are reasons why we should follow up. And, um, and there are important reasons why we should follow up, but I know that we still live with that little bitty icky committee that in our head, like all those reasons why we don't want to follow up. And um, I just thought tonight we would talk about some ways to combat that, right? 
So for me, um, there's two big things, right? Number one is um, one that you're probably not going to gonna want to hear. It's just to do it. You just have to do it. You have you have to just do it. You just have to pick up your phone or get on Facebook for a private messenger. It does, oh, by the way, it doesn't count as follow-up if you're just putting on Facebook that I'm placing you in order. Can I get you anything? It doesn't count. Um, follow-up counts as a private one-on-one -on -one communication, just so you know, for the record. Um, so, um, number one thing to do is to just do it. Just do it. Like you have to do it. There's a million things that we have to do. Some of us have to get up and go to work. Some of us have to brush our teeth. All of us should brush our teeth, but I don't know. I hate brushing my teeth. It's a weird thing. Anyway, I shouldn't share that. Um, so, um, that's the number one thing is to just do it. The number two thing is, um, I guess I'll just tell this like in a little story. So if I um, am going to work out, if I'm going to go to the gym, I have to go to the gym on my way home from work because I know that if I get home and get comfortable, I'm not going back out to the, the gym, right? So if I'm prepared, if I have my gym shoes, if I have a water bottle, if I have a sports bra, then I'm going to go to the gym, right? So that's how I feel about follow-up, right? It wasn't until I had a follow-up system in place, so I had my gym shoes ready, that I felt like I could jump in to follow up and just really do it, right? So <laughs> I would encourage you to come up with a follow-up system, and I'm not going to talk about follow-up systems here tonight. I feel like um, we've covered them a bunch. There's a bunch of videos online. Um, YouTube is a great place to look for follow-ups, and, and if, if everyone sat down here together, we would all come up with a different, excuse me, a different follow-up system. It's all, it's going to come down to what you're comfortable with and what's ob obtainable for you. So, um, go on YouTube. If you don't have a system, um, um, if you don't have a system, then get one. And what a follow-up system will do is just, it shows you that you can, and it shows you where you are in the game, right? Like, did you follow up with this person? How long ago? Um, is it time to follow up with them again? What did you help them with? Like, those are the three things that you want to look for in a follow-up system. Am I forgetting anything? Does anybody have a system? No, it just kind of automates the process for you. So right. you know that when you get a new customer or you have a sale, you know because you have this system in place that you are going to be touching base with them in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few months, because that's part of your system. So it, it's really just about automation and simplifying it so that you're not scrambling for someone's phone number or for their order form. You have it all in one place, in one, a buyer yeah. or whatever, you know, whatever your system is, you know where it is and you know how to do it. Speaking of your phone, I feel like that is the number, that's every, a lot of people's follow-up systems. So I totally did that for way longer than I should have. And let me tell you, um, when I started doing a follow-up system as opposed to my phone, my number of people to follow up with like quadrupled. It was like five, six, seven times bigger than what it was when I was just dealing with my phone. It was, made a huge difference. Um, so if you're running out of people to get in touch with, then I think you have to go back to um, your order forms and things and, like that. And you need to diversify the way you contact your people also. You need to make sure that when you are talking to them in that initial conversation, you ask, how do you want to be contacted? And that's how you do it. So some people are going to prefer email and some people are going to prefer text and some people are going to prefer private message or whatever. And that's, again, one of those facets that you need to adapt into your follow-up system. Yeah, just kind of keeping track of that. I, um, by nature, I'm a texter. And so, it, and I, I think that's the easiest method. And so if you are in um, follow-up 101 and you've never followed up before, um, and so you're just getting your brave on and you're like, okay, I'm going to follow up. I would suggest starting with texting, um, just because it is, it is doing it. It, it, you know, 
a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a telephone conversation is better, but texting is doing it. It's getting it done, right? And I would say of the people who give you a way to contact you, 90% um, of them are going to prefer text. Do you find that to be true, Jane? That's what totally. Yeah, nobody wants phone calls anymore. I know. I know. Nobody answers their phone, first of all. <laughs> Especially in this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so come up with a system and if you don't have a system and you want to start follow up tonight and you want to get organized tonight, just take all of your order forms and put them in a pile. And, and like literally if, if that's what you have is just a pile of order forms and you're working off the top and you're texting the first person and you're turning that and going to the next person and texting that person, that's That counts as follow up. That counts as getting it going. So I would definitely, um, that's literally what my system is, but I use a binder. Like that's literally my system because I can't deal with all these folders and all these binders and all these labels and things that people do. It's just too much. It, it's one of those things where you, you also need to think about how much time are you putting into coming up with a system and making it look pretty and whatever, as opposed to actually doing it. Right. So that, that's the most important thing is actually doing it. Um, and my rule of thumb is always, uh, there's not a day that goes by that I don't do some sort of follow-up. Even if it's just one quick private message to the last girl that ordered from me, hey girl, how you liking that scent? Uh, there, that is part of, I, I, I don't, you know, go poop any day without texting somebody. Like, it is just, it's part of my day. <laughs> I figured I'd have saved you. You're talking about not brushing your teeth, so I figured I'd say poop. <laughs> I was going to say, if I brush my teeth, I got to text people. I'd much rather follow up with people than brush my teeth. I don't know. It's so gross. Like, sticking the thing you're in your weird. mouth. You're just Whatever. So weird. <laughs> okay. So, and then the other thing that stops people from following up is just not knowing what to say to people when you follow up. So, I'm just going to give you a couple of different scenarios and what I would say in those scenarios. And, James, if you have any or if anybody else has any they'd like to share, please, please jump in. So, first one is prospecting. So, I, I have a ton of these where I've collected people's information. These folks, if I have a note, a lot of times I'll put a note about our conversation. Um, it, even if I don't have a note, I will still follow up with them. But if I have a note, I will say, hey, it's Casey, the Cincy lady from, let's say where we met. Um, I was just thinking about you and your dog that when we met, she's so cute. Um, I'm making up some free, from some samples. I'd love to send you something. What's a, you know, is this, the, is this a good address? Or something like that. And something where they have to reply to me before I just send them out a free sample. Always. That's, that's my number one thing. Email, text messages, you name it. That's my, especially for the cold contacts of people that you haven't yes. followed up with in months. That's a great way to break the ice. Hey, I'm making samples today. I would love to send you one. Yeah. And I, and I, and there are sent sample swaps going on all over town. I know it. I know um, that a lot of folks are attending these guys. And so I would definitely um, take advantage of the scent sample swaps in order to just follow up with these people, right? Thank you. Um, so that's one, one scenario. Second scenario is if someone just bought something from you at a party, right? So, so the 222 method is a really common method. And once you start looking for follow-up systems, you're going to come across that one. Um, so, We'll get to what the twos are, but if someone, if I just delivered a party order to a hostess and I know that she's delivered them to their guests, let's say two days after that, I'm going to text the people who were the guests there and just ask them, did everything arrive okay? Um, did you get your order? Did everything arrive okay? I'm not going to try and sell them anything. I'm going to probably going to tell them it was really nice to meet you. I'm so glad that we got to share. Um, you know, whatever we did crazy at the party. It's usually some sort of crazy game or something. Um, and, and that's it. And that's it. I'm not, I'm not talking anything about Sensi. Um, that's one scenario. Jame, anything to add on to that? The same type thing if you ever do an event or a fundraiser, like after the people, you know, get home for a day or two, you want to follow up and say, you know, have you had a chance to plug that warmer in? Is it everything you thought it could be? Like, is, is, it, is it working? Is everything? It's literally just a customer care call. You just want to make sure they got it and that they're happy with it. You're not trying to sell them. It's, this is about developing the relationship 
and like think think about your relationship with your customers as kind of like velcro like you start kind of like halfway grasp and then with every connection you make you're just getting stickier and stickier until they will always associate you with Sensi and Sensi with you. And that's what it's about. I love that little sticky Velcro thing. I mean, pew, pew. And then the next thing you know, oh, there's no lasers in home. Okay. <laughs> it's really just, it's about warm fuzzies and making a connection. No lasers. Pew. <laughs> You're stuck together. I mean, if you met them at like really a, like a making tag convention. Tomorrow <laughs> is May the fourth be with you. So we have to have some sort of lasers. <laughs> All right. So my two week follow up, this is the second two in the two 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 method, is also just a customer care follow up. I am not I'm not talking anything about sales. This is when I actually will say to them, hey, did you get a chance to plug in that warmer? Did you try blueberry cheesecake? Doesn't it smell delicious? I hope it didn't make you want to eat your arm off. Like, mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm talking about with these people when I'm calling them two yep. weeks after. And so I, I try to, like, leave it as an open-ended conversation. I try not to talk just about Sensi. So that's where it's really important to take notes when you're at parties, um, just to know what you're following up with these folks about. Um, and then the two months, that's the third two and the two, two, two. And that's where I'm going to reach out to them and make sure that they're not the lady who's standing in the middle of their kitchen with the empty pods and the empty tastefully simple. And just saying to them, hey, I'm placing an order. I'm imagining that you're running low. Is there anything I can get you? This scent is out right now. It's 10% off. I think you'd love it. Boom. That's my 222 method. And then there are some people who, when I meet them, I make a mental note and I'm like, uh huh, I think, I think you'd be good at this. And so they're the folks that I'm, I am taking really good, um, notes about who they are and the things that they enjoy and just, trying to shoot them with my pew, 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 lanes. <laughs> so the number one thing I think, and this goes with everything in this business, is listening instead mm -hmm. of doing all the talking. So it's the same thing when you're having a recruiting or a booking conversation. You want them to do most of the talking. And it's the same thing with follow-up. You want to offer them, you want to open the door for them to respond. And then when they respond, you're not barfing sensi on them. You're simply providing a quick service and letting them be happy with it. Like, that's really all it's about. You're not going to try to, well, you know, we have this scent that's out this month, and we have this one, and you could always host a basket party if you want, and I can drop a catalog off to you. Like, blah, blah, blah. like you, yeah. you can't do that. You have to just kind of open the door, let them step in slowly, and just be there to welcome them, when, you know, when they're ready to do whatever it is they want to do. And you have to be able to feel that out with them. It's one of those things where, it, it, it's going to feel a little awkward when you first start doing it, kind of transitioning from a sales conversation to a booking conversation to a recruiting conversation. But those things happen as you're following up because you'll find some people are like, well, can I smell all of them? Right. Is there any way that I could have a catalog? And, and that's going to lead you to the next couple of steps, which is what this is all about. Right. Because we're not just, we're not order takers, right. We're not in this business to just take orders. We want right. to do parties because hostesses lead to team members and that's going to lead to growth in your business. Absolutely. And so, um, that was my, my last follow-up note is just following up with those people that you, that you've listened to and you have their, um, you have something and you're just working to build a conversation and more times than not for these people, they're newer to me and they're, and the people that I, um, have really like taken note of and really listened to who I think that will be good at this are people who like to have conversation. Right. And so they're going to start asking me questions. And usually the questions that they're going to ask me about are about the things that they know about me. So generally when people meet me, they know um, that I have a son, that I have a husband that I recently moved and that I'm the sensi lady. So I have a one in four shot that this person's going to come back to me and talk Scentsy. And since we met at a Scentsy party, 
that's probably going to be the thing that they remember me remember about me and so they're going to ask me how sensey going and so that's the way that sensey comes into the conversation just like jamie says you're just opening the door and sometimes it's just better to let them ask you so <laughs> That's really follow up in a nutshell, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I forgetting anything? I can't think of anything. Um, you're just taking care of your customer's needs, right? Like, you don't want people to feel like they um, to feel like a number. You don't want feel, people to feel like they're just buying things from you to buy things from you. And, and you don't you want, want people. To to, yeah, and you don't want them to go to eBay or Amazon or post on MomSwap. Yeah. Hey, are there any sensey Because that that's just like a, a slap in the face, right? You you want your customers to come to you. That's why you've invested time and energy into filling out an order form with them or having that initial sale with them. They're like they're like these little possibility little golden seedlings, and you don't know if they're gonna grow into a big oak tree or if they're just gonna stay. You don't know, right? You don't know their potential. Every customer has a potential to be your best customer or your best hostess, or your best team member, right? And it's up to you to keep that door open and, and remind them that they can call, text, or email you any day, you know, get them in your Facebook VIP page, make them feel special, make them feel connected to you, show them your personality, be authentic, and be consistent with the follow-up. So there's no better time to start following up than literally right now. It's not that, that far past nine o'clock. You can probably shoot some text messages or emails tonight if you haven't started already. And like Casey said, pile them up. Start at the top. Literally. That's exactly what I did to start with. When I was like, finally like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I just piled them off and went through them. And I will tell you, it was a pile. Like, it was a big pile. By the time I realized that I was missing out on business, I already had a big pile. So the earlier you are in the game, the better it's going to be to develop a system and kind of just keep going. So oh, this I remember I got one thing. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I have a hot list. So you were saying you have those people that you think have, have something. So in my, I keep all my notes and everything in my planner, uh, but you could just use, you know, a whiteboard or a sheet of paper or, you know, a post-it note, whatever. But I have a hot list of those people that I keep in my planner. And when I'm doing follow-ups at least once a week, I'm touching base with those people because I know that these are my potential hostesses. These are those people that you meet at an event or a party and they say they want to, or they seem interested, or they say maybe, right? So if there's a join special, a party incentive, whatever, right? Though that's my hot list. And that hot list grows every single month. And sometimes they go cold and I text them for nothing, nothing, nothing for months. And all, all of a sudden that one person where it's the stream of text messages for like eight or 10 times of me saying, hey, Jamie, the Sensi girl, would you like to party on May 4th, whatever? Um, all of a sudden they respond back. And I had thought for months and months that I was texting the wrong number because no one ever texted me. <laughs> It happens. I've like I've gotten team members from that. Like it, you just have to be consistent. And every single time, they always thank me for following up. Thank you. I was so busy. Thank you so much for for following up because I I really wanted this to happen. And I, and if you wouldn't have followed up, it wouldn't have happened. So, Jane, you said you follow up with them like once a week. Like, what are you saying to people weekly? It depends. So, it well, it depends what's going on. Um, it, it usually works out to be every two to three weeks, and it depends how hot the lead is. So, if it was just at an event that I just had and, like, I can still picture their face in my head, like that type of thing, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm hitting them hard at first until I get any feedback, right? And at first, it's just, are you happy with everything? I got samples, you know, I have a really great booking incentive next month, just like throwing all the goodies at them until I get something back. And then once, you know, I've probably texted them five or six times with nothing, then they kind of go in the back burner. I'm like, okay, well, they go to the media, the medium. The, the spark is gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and, but like I said, there's, they're still, I'm, I'm not giving up on them. Yeah. I, I still have people in my contact list that have only ordered from me once four years ago, but every once in a while, one of them will pop up and say, yes, I want a sample. And yes, I'm, I want a catalog party. It's worth it. It's worth the two seconds that it takes to shoot an email or a text message. Um, I 100% agree. So we're going to run out of time because I get the free zoom. Woo -woo. Um, so really follow up in a nutshell is three things. You're taking care of your customers. 
and building relationships, taking care of your customers, building relationships with your customers, and which in turn builds your business. So you definitely, you're missing the boat if you're not following up. Um, so if you, have, you, if you have a system, get it out, dust it off, and start using it tonight. If not, definitely just grab grab those pile of order forms and, and get, get going. So in my opinion, there are three things um, that you do in this business that are going to um, absolutely take you to the next level. Number one is follow up and number two and three we're going to talk about next month. So um, if anybody has any questions about follow up or success stories about follow up, I'm going to, um, unmute everyone right now because I want to give everyone a chance to talk. We have five minutes. Can you guys hear me? It can yeah. hear you. Oh, hi. It's Lisa. Hey, hey Lisa. Hey, how are you guys? So great. I can't wait to see you. Yeah, I know. I wish sometime I could get on here. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see you in um, Kansas City, right? Yes, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Nice. So what's your follow-up system like, sister friend? Um, I just started one. I posted a little short video. Oh, it yeah. It said it wasn't available. Oh, it did? Mm-hmm. I, well, I, it was hard because I did it live on my page and then I tried to copy it. And uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Anyway, I have a couple systems going. I have one going that um, just starts with, you know, a pocket that says ordered, a pocket that says um, pending delivery, delivered, and then it does the one week, one month, and then, you know, so on. And then mm -hmm. I have another system going that just is every month so that I can just put their, a page about them in there. Mm -hmm. And I do the two, two, two then after that, and then I just have monthly little files. So I just started that on May 1st, and it's going good so far. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. And I, I think that you'll see big results, right? When you, when I think so. It. it makes me feel a lot better. And I do have way less stress not worrying about stuff. So. Yeah, and it's completely measurable, right? Like if you're reaching out to – if you feel like you're working your business um, – and you're not getting any results, you can't, a lot of times you can't go back and say, well, I did this, this, and this, and this, and, right. and nothing happened. Where if you are working your business and you have this follow-up system, you can say, okay, today I'm gonna follow up with 25 people, and you actually have something you can mark off of your list, and you did something. And so in turn, that builds your confidence I think, in your business and in yourself. Yes, yeah, and I've been doing it for a year, so you know, it's just kind of been building up, and I've been contacting the people that I, remembered so yeah it's a huge relief <laughs> absolutely anybody else got any good follow-up stories or questions I think Danielle's looking for a follow-up system <laughs> person <laughs> I'm looking for some staples right now <laughs> I saw there was one superstar director where she follows like a 222 method or whatever but she'll actually she prints post-its with like the dates on it and that way she can put the post-its on the pile of order forms or on the whatever so that she knows like the last time that she followed up with them so that that's kind of nifty printing the printing on the post-its printing on a post-it like an actual post-it yeah Brittany Clapp does it yeah she like you know she's so crafty like mm -hmm. she the paper and she'll put the um, post-its on it whatever normal size post-its and then when they go through the printer they'll print whatever the thing is on the post-it oh. pull it off and then you stick it on you know hmm. whatever your pile of order forms is that way you're like okay th this is my the people that I followed up with this month so I know in two months I need to follow up with these same people again yeah and I loved Valerie's stamp Valerie in our group she had a stamp and and she, it was basically like when she followed up with them what she talked to them it's like an ink stamper you know like the yeah. For everyone who, got, who didn't see it, she just stamps it right on the, um, she prints the receipt off of the workstation. She doesn't use the um, actual um, order forms, stamps it right on there. So then she knows when she talked to them, what she talked to them about, and she has their order right there. It seemed like a really good system, and she just has like a little space where she can put a check mark. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. It's a little bit more involved than, than, than what I have time 
that to do. That mine's like the easiest thing in the world. I, I just can't, I can't handle anything other than what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm crafty, but I'm like a page protector and me writing on it with a Sharpie is good enough. <laughs> That's pretty much my system as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, if no one has any questions, I think we will wrap this puppy up before Zoom kicks us out. And I will see you guys next month. Good luck on working the summer incentive. We have um, definitely I'm pumped. Our, I want that warmer. Yeah. Sign me up. And it's definitely obtainable for everyone. Like we all can earn this. There's no reason why every single person in our whole entire group can't earn this. So, True. all right, guys. And I'll well, go to free next year. That's right. That's yeah. right. All right. All right. Good night. Bye.